What's up, guys? It's Spaz from Evolve Inc. I'm here with Edsel from Dope. What's up? Um, in Dallas, Texas, yo. <laughs> a little bit of backstory. Um, I've been a fan for a long time, uh, mostly because of my tour in Afghanistan. Oh, nice. Right? Um, Appreciate it, man. Die, motherfucker, die was pretty much our war theme song. I've heard this many times. <laughs> we, uh, every time we hit a convoy, that was our starting song. Great. Start off by asking you how the Die Motherfucker Die reunion tour was going off, and why did you decide to do a reunion tour now? Uh, it's going really good. Um, you know, it happened sort of by accident. Um, this band has been around quite some time, and we've never had the same lineup through any two records. It's always been a different group of guys, or at least a few guys have changed out. Right. Um, so. Um, that's later in my career that's actually worked out really well for me because I, I feel like I have like a fraternity like atmosphere within the band where I have a slew of dudes that I've played with throughout the years that all know the songs they all have the look they all we all get along we're all friends so pending on as we've gotten older now pending on availability and schedule and interest I have uh, a very solid support system of guys that I can call on to either go in the studio to make records or go on tour. Um, so this tour is made up of the core lineup of the Die Motherfucker Die record that came out in 02, uh, which is myself, Racy on drums, AC on bass, Virus on guitar. Um, <clears throat> and through the years, you know, I've continued to play shows with Virus, I continue to play shows with AC, continue to play shows with Racy, but in some weird fucking form, the four of us had not played together. Like right, I, right. Like literally a year and a half ago, I was in the UK doing a UK tour with Cold Chamber, and it was myself, Racy on drums, AC on bass, but we had our other guitar player, Nick, playing guitar. Um, Virus was doing something else. Uh, previously to that, there were some shows where my current drummer Dan, who's now playing drums with Marilyn Manson, right. uh, he was uh, he was playing drums, and Virus was there, and AC was there. Um, and then there's been shows, you know, with with just Virus and a different lineup, but but these four guys just hadn't played together in ten plus years. So um, I didn't even realize it at the time. I was going back to Russia. We go to Russia about once a year. And uh, I sent out my emails and texts to my dudes to see who was available, and got back uh, that these all these guys wanted to do it, and it didn't even occur to me till after everybody said they wanted to do it that I, I was like, all right, I know I just played with Racy, he knows the songs, but, but wait a minute, we haven't all played together in a really long time, so um, it. Uh, so for me, I think it's less special because I've played with all of them recently, um, but the. It, what makes it fun is it's like when you're in junior high school yep. and you got your inside jokes with those dudes and maybe even one of those dudes wound up going to the same high school with you but in high school you had different inside jokes and different stories so for us being together on the road um, after all this time it's just you know the last time all four of us were in Dallas together was a long time ago right, I've right. been to Dallas many times since but it's so all those stories come back and you just kind of break into a different a different little tribe of, of brotherhood and stories and fun and all that shit so tours going great um, fans are stoked I think um, this is the first time that the band as a whole has done a full US tour in about six years since our last album came out um, done regional stuff and gone back and forth overseas and whatnot, but like Texas for instance, I don't think we've been to Texas since the last time we did a full US tour, which was six years ago. Right. So um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of touch points that are making this tour special. There's the fact that it's our first national tour in six or seven years. It's our first album in six or seven years that we're promoting and it's the first time that this lineup's played together in ten years. So um, it's just a, a lot more reason, I think, to, to give folks a reason to pay attention. And in this day and age where everything goes past your news feed so fast, uh, it's just giving people another reason for it to hit their news feed, which I think has made uh, more touch point, more, more good, you know, better turnout for the shows, and more interest overall in what's going on, which okay. is great. All right, uh, do you think that that adds to the, the uh, creative juices of the band? <laughs> It being so long since you've all played together? No, because we're playing stuff that's already written. It's already there. Are yeah. you? Y'all not writing anything new? No, I mean, I. Y'all thinking about? 
I mean, not really. I mean, when it comes to the creative process of the band, it's like I'm kind of the filter that everything goes through. So, you know, making the Blood Money record, for instance, I mean, this record didn't take this long because it, it had to. It took this long because I needed to take a break from touring. And I just, you know, it was 12 years of nonstop touring and making records where my life really had no other purpose. Like, I had family members pass away. I had family members born. I had family members get married, and I didn't go to a single birth, wedding, or a funeral okay. because I was on tour all the time. Um, so when I finally stopped for a minute, and I kind of remembered, you know, there's more to life. It uh, it was that was an important step for me in growth as a man, even to kind of like realize that my priorities were a little fucked up, and I needed to to reset, think some things. So. Um, the last several years that we haven't been doing full tours and we haven't been releasing records, we've been writing like normal. So I've written a ton and tons of songs, some of them with, with Virus, some of them with other guys. and um, That's why ultimately Blood Money will end up being a, a multi-part record because I wrote so many songs in that time frame, it would feel very weird for me to title them something else. So um, the first one's coming out October 28th. Uh, there's a bunch more songs in the works that just need to get finished up, and that'll become part two at some point. And then uh, I'll get to writing again whenever you know the, the mood strikes. I mean, I write pretty consistently anyway. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, again, this the 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 lineup that tours, it's always different, so uh, it doesn't really affect what happens in the studio. Um, but again, I, I feel very very blessed that I have a lot of talented guys around me that I can call on for touring or for studio work, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever's happening. I got a lot of guys that I can pull from that are part of the, the dope fraternity. And let's not kid ourselves either. It's not like all these guys are sitting around waiting for the phone to ring for me. You know, <laughs> yeah, these dudes yeah, are definitely. all doing great stuff. You know, AC's playing at the Misfits now and he's played in Joe Chet for many years. And Virus did that device thing with David Draymond. And, yes. Um, you know, I've had, you know, guys in my band playing Static X. I got my drummer Dan's now playing in Marilyn Manson. I got, uh, you know, dudes that played in the Murder Dolls. Like, I'm in, I, I, I'm kind of proud of that as well. The Dope has sort of been a, sort of a, 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 a proving ground for guys to kind of come through and, and, and get their wings and then go on and do other things as well. A lot more so than I feel like a lot of bands out there, which makes me feel like, A, I'm a good judge of talent, or B, I'm a good mentor. But some, right, somehow, right. some way, it works, and, and I'm, I'm happy for all those guys and hope everybody continues to have great success and when we can all come together and do stuff together, it's cool. When, when you first started Dope, okay, when you thought of the concept for Dope, did you think that it was going to be like this, or did you think it was going to be, you know, your original guys until the end? No, I knew, I knew it would be more like this. Like, it was built more like a Nine Inch Nails, um, where it was like, you know, you know, if Trent Reznor's there, it's Nine Inch Nails, and there's certain right. guys right. That, that come and go, and certain guys that may have more emphasis than others, but at the end of the day, um, you know, there's no Nine Inch Nails without Trent. There's no right. dope without Ed's dope. Right. Um, but, uh, but that that's not for me to take anything away from the contributions of what the other guys bring to the table. It's just that, um, you know, I, I feel like it, it, it has a different, it takes on a different shape based on where I'm at creatively and what it is that I'm trying to get across. Um, and I, I feel, I feel that it's, that for me to do that, sometimes I have to look outward and find, you know, what I'm looking for through. Um, now, since we are uh, Evolve Inc. and Inc. Magazine, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your Inc. Cool. Now, as a lead singer yep. in a very popular band, a lot of people know you go into a town and you got to have at least 50 people going, hey, bro, I'll give you free tattoos. All right, and at, at the beginning, I'm sure that's awesome, but at some point, you got to be like, okay, no, man, like, who do you, who do you go to that you trust? Um, to do your tattoos. Well, that used to happen a lot back in the day, um, you know, when we were a lot more adventurous in all ways. Um, now, you know, I, I don't really go to anybody specifically anymore because I'm kind of done. I mean, it'd be nice to get to get everything redone again because it's kind of starting to fade as I've gotten a little older. I'd love to have it all, but I have no color work, so. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind getting it all redone, but 
most of mine were done like chunks at a time and they all sort of like I know for the most part where I was at in my life when I got different pieces of it done um, and, uh, and I've tried to get stuff done in you know, different places around the world and stuff right. like that as well but uh, I don't have a go-to guy right now because I've, I'm just kind of done. Did you have one? I had a couple. I had a dude in New York, uh, his name was Eric, at a place called the Ink Stop, which uh, he did a lot of work for me that was cool. And then I had a dude in uh, Illinois for a while, his name was Ron, I can't remember his last name, but he was a cool dude that used to have his own shop. He'd just come to my house while I was working and just nice. hit me in while I was in the studio. Um, and he would he would do stuff for me, but um, but yeah, it's but it's it's been a while. I probably haven't gotten poked with a needle in uh, shit probably eight or ten years. For the new album, Blood Money. Blood Money. All right. Um, you have blood you have money. this this beautiful model with all the blood on it. Right. Um, who's your model? Um, I usually pull from within my inner circle. Um, this is a girl that I've known for, for many years. Uh, we're going to leave her name uh, out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Anonymity. Um, yeah, she's just a really, really good friend of mine. Really super cool, very pretty girl. Uh, she's actually Asian, uh, which I felt like helped to make it uh, just a little bit more, uh, I don't know the right word, but helped with the artistic cre vision of what I was trying to do, the naked Asian girl covered in blood. Um, she did a phenomenal job. She really got into it. Uh, the video shoot was a lot of fun because I direct the videos and I wear multiple hats. So I was, you know, you direct your own videos. Yeah, I direct all of them. Wow. Um, and That's pretty good. You know, in doing, I produce them and direct them because the, the, the term that I like to use is it allows a lot more of the budget to wind up on the screen. Because right. you don't have to, you know, put that money into other people's pocket that are that are doing the job. I just do the job and just don't sleep. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, I wear a lot of hats on the set, and uh, on that set, I, I was uh, I wasn't the one pouring the blood, but because I was the director, I was, there's a common joke within us: of the more blood, more blood. <laughs> they kept having to put more blood on her, but she did a really good job with it. But yeah, that's who we're talking about right there: Asian girl covered in blood, the blood money part one. Came out good too in the thing. Put her right in the middle, big spread. Oh yeah. The camera is that for sure. release. There she is. Love it. There's gonna be a lot of people's walls right there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh, another question for you about this album. Um, this is Blood Money Part One. Yep. When are we expecting two? Uh, I I don't know. I'm not even thinking about it. I want to get Blood Money Part One out. It's not even out yet. It's another week till it comes out, uh, and then uh, I want to finish this tour. As soon as this tour is over, the very next day I get on a plane to fly to Russia and got to do a bunch of dates in Russia and then the Ukraine and the United Kingdom and then uh, come back to America and it'll be Thanksgiving and then it'll be Christmas. Yeah, we'll um, going on. yeah man, and then we'll figure it out. But I, you know, it's I will say I don't think it will be a big gap in between records, okay. which is cool. Yes. Um, but I don't I don't have that answer yet. I'm, I'm really not feeling any pressure on it yet. I feel like fans will get this one and they'll they'll be able to, to sink their teeth into it. We did a live album recently as well, which is the first time we've ever done a live record. It's like 21 of our classic songs that came out earlier this year. Um, so I feel like the fans got a lot right now. They got a lot to sink their teeth into and we'll be, you know, continuously putting new music videos out and all that kind of stuff, even though we've got three out for this record For this already. record, yes. And, and it's not even released. Out yet. So, um, you know, I feel like we're, we're, we're on we're on point right now with, with putting a lot of content out there and staying busy on the social media stuff and, and keeping the fans happy, so one, okay. st one step at a time. Um, with the Blood Money album, we've got 15 tracks, correct? Um, 15 tracks, yep, okay. 14 plus the bonus. Um, you may not have thought about part two yet, but are we going to see the same amount of tracks there? Well, um, there's a lot of songs right now, man, between these two, these two records. In a perfect world, um, I'm not sure that full-length albums uh, should even exist anymore, in my opinion. Okay. I think that that's too much emphasis put on a giant body of work. When I say giant, I mean 14, 15 songs. Right. And then 
the pressure to go and promote that for a certain length of time for those sales to get to a certain point where you feel like it's it's ran its course and then you start talking about the next one. I believe for the world that we're in where people have a, a shorter attention span and people are always looking for content, I think a better system would be more frequent and less. Almost like instead of a major motion picture, you do mini series, or you do right. like you know, like you watch a weekly series like The Sopranos or Boardwalk Empire or or Walking Dead or whatever people like to watch. There, there's always something that for them to look forward to. Um, so if, if if I were creating the business of the music business model of the future, I think it's six songs a year, one music video, and a tour. And that way your fans always have something to look forward to. If you're an established band like we are, it's not like you're going to put out a new album and play 15 songs new live anyway. You're only going to play a right. few new songs along with a the old catalog. The so um, I think if you put out six songs a year and do a tour once a year and sort of model the tour and the look of what you're doing around that music video that's sort of the, you know, the centerpiece of what you're doing, um, I think that's a more interesting and compelling model. Die, motherfucker, die. I would say that it's very likely the Blood Money Part 2 will be a, another full-length album, but if we decide to go the independent route and just do it on our own 100%, which we may or may not do, uh, then I think it will be a smaller body of work, but more frequent. Okay. Um, speaking of social media, you brought that up. I know that you're not a fan of it. It's hard for me to participate in it to the level of uh, of what would benefit me better because I've really learned that I'm not a narcissist, and I, I and and I feel like you, know, the, you will perform better on social media the more of a narcissistic approach that you take. The more pictures you take of yourself doing your stuff, the more people react. And it's right. really hard for me to do that. It's hard for me to sit at home by my pool and take a picture of me and go, hey, look how fucking cool I am. Or like, hey, I'm a, I, here's a plate of the food that I'm about to eat. Like, right, right. I don't know, man. I come from a day where like, <clears throat> you know, you put out records and then there's a media source that listens to them and then they sit down and they interview you and then they they put that out to the world and people are able to go and, 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 and read an interview or watch an interview. Um, me delivering not just news about my band or my music, but like my personal experiences to the world through Instagram and, so, and, and Facebook. It's a little pretentious to me, and it's, okay. I feel as if again it, it's it's very, and I could be seeing it wrong, but it's very no, it's very much narcissistic behavior. It's like I don't think what I'm eating is news. I don't think that me sitting around watching the Super Bowl is news. I don't think that me watching the political debate the other night, I don't feel the need to sit there on Twitter and give my commentate my right. commentary on what I just witnessed. I don't I don't think that that's valuable. Maybe but I know people who are like, "Oh, you should do that because more people will participate and take take part in your band if you do." I'm like, well, that's, "I'm a fucking artist. I make records." So like, hopefully you listen to my records and that's part of it and I understand marketing and that's why I make really cool music videos and that's why I make really cool artwork for my records but um, I'm not uh, I can't get behind the, my opinion on everything matters and my 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 everyday activities and everything that I do matters to, to others and I, I and honestly I don't think it's healthy I don't think it's healthy that we're breeding a society of young people that are being raised in this narcissistic world where how many likes you get on Instagram is your self worth. Right. You know. Right. Absolutely. I don't think it's right that people like that. It went from reality TV stars where like everybody wanted to have their own reality show, and now it's everybody wants to be a, a famous Instagram person. I don't get it. Like again, these aren't artists. These aren't. These aren't Einstein. These aren't people that are changing the world. They're just chicks with big asses and guys that are Never doing silly <laughs> things. No, I know. I, I get it. Um, but but again, it's 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 what it says. It's what the numbers say. It's like I'm a chick with a cute smile and a big ass, and I have four million followers on Instagram. If you were Albert Einstein in today's day and age, you wouldn't have four million. Follow no. on Instagram. No, um, it's not. just a, it's just again, it's just a weird thing to watch. And I hope as a society that we come through it, and that we, and that the next.
next chapter is something better because for the last 10 or 12 years it's been evolving from bad reality TV shows and these, these overly ignorant senses of false fame and 15 minute fame that evaporates it has no substance to it no meaning no value to anything other than the narcissistic behavior of the person that gets to stand there and go I'm famous and the people that go I want to be around you because you're famous but there, there's no point in any of it again reality TV someone being famous for reality TV is a, it's a very puzzling concept I mean, really, what has Kim Kardashian ever done except for be the daughter of a wealthy attorney, suck Ray J's dick, and now she now she's with uh, with Kanye? It's like you're a very pretty girl, Kim, and you and you've put out a cool clothing line, but the fact that she has the most present social media presence in the world is terrifying. So that when, means that that means that people are small-minded enough to follow that. It just means people are participating in it on a right. daily basis and that's scary. So you look at that and you go, okay, how's that equate to the world? Well, let's look at Donald Trump. I don't care what your opinion of Donald Trump is. The fact is that you have a reality TV star who has turned the election process into entertainment and a popularity contest by using catchphrases like Crooked Hillary, Low Energy Jeb, uh, Lion Ted, like he throws out all these, he's using entertainment, business stuff, catchphrases and things to get people into the hype and into the entertainment side of it. And they're voting from an entertainment side, not because of the, the issues at hand. Right. right. Um, so that's very scary. And, and if you want to see the next evolution of that, I'm not predicting anything. But if, if, again, you look at Kim Kardashian, who has the biggest social media presence in the world, and you look at the fact that 14-year-olds will be voting in four years, and 16-year-olds will be 20, yeah. and 18-year-olds will be 22. And if you don't think it's possible that Kim Kardashian and her very influential artistic husband, who's also a strong black man mm -hmm. and a very influential black man to the, the, to the, the ethnic community in general, if you don't think that that's not a tremendous amount of power that could ultimately propel him into at least the initial stages of running for office, you're insane. And he's already said he was going to as well. So, again, whether or not he has the ability to lead us, I'm not even saying. I'm just saying that you're talking about power from social media and you're talking about the most influential person on social media is a person that's never done anything except for be the daughter of a wealthy person and fucking screw a rapper a on a sex tape and now is married to another very famous influential artist. He's losing his damn mind. Which is so... <laughs> so again, the only point I'm trying to make with all that is we're really one step away from idiocracy. We really are. Not it's sure not there. that. No, I don't think we're there yet, but we're close. Um, <laughs> I think everybody I know has at least made that comment. Like, yeah, this is it. We're in it. it it's Look it's almost there. there. I mean, I think that it's you know, I think it's very likely that Hillary will win, yes. which at least tells us that our society is is not overboard with just the insanity of it. Because again, whether you agree with Trump or not, he has some dangerous thoughts. He yes. does. He does put us in a position where we we could find ourselves in some very fucked up situations if he was the guy that was able to just, I'm having a bad day, I'm pissed off, I'm going to go after something here. Right. At least, you know, she, again, I'm not saying what my opinion yep, is. Yep, absolutely. It's At least she, she sort of has the cooler heads prevail kind of mentality. And if she wins, it says that in the end, cooler heads prevailed amongst voters. Um, that's a good thing, just that cooler heads prevail. But uh, but again, I don't think our election system will ever be the same, at least not for many years to come. I think they've learned that it's, it's entertainment, and they're going to continue to use that, and that's where it's scary to me. Die, motherfucker, die! Uh, Evolve Inc. being a graphic design slash tattoo magazine, things like that. Um, Bands like yourself, okay? You've been around for a while. You've probably worked with a lot of people. Who is your Who's your go-to people 
for your graphic design? Uh, I have one guy, and uh, I do everything else myself. Um, I do a lot of the, a lot of it myself. A lot of t-shirt designs I do myself. Um, a lot of the, like I did the whole, all the artwork for the live record. I did it all myself. Um, for my albums, I have a, an artist who's amazing. He's a photographer and a graphic artist named Stefan Jensen. He owns a company called F3 Design. Um, he does my album covers. He's done the last four or five with me. I just have a great relationship with him where he really <coughs> understands the spirit of dope. And um, it doesn't take us long to get to the finish line. Like right. He, he kind of knows what I'm looking for. and He's been around us so long and, and around and work with me closely so long that he really help he really knows what I'm trying to accomplish um, so he's phenomenal but it, it, and he used to do everything for me. he used to do all my t-shirt designs all that stuff but like anything else you know people get busy and, and money talks and yeah. I've gotten more talented in, in, through the years as well so a lot of times um, I don't call on him for for a lot of things that I used to just because he's, he's busy he's got a, he also owns a clothing company called Warren Star. Uh, Warnstar? Yeah, Warnstar.com, Warnstar Clothing. Um, tons of rock and roll people are wearing their shit now. It's really popular. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, he's, he's phenomenal. Super, super talented uh, and super, super... Die, motherfucker, die! What's the craziest thing you've seen on the road? I mean, I've been doing this so long, man. I, there's, what's, the, what's the craziest thing I haven't seen on the road? I mean, I've seen it all. Um, this we're, tour's we're, been a little more tame. Let's generalize Yeah, this tour. I don't know, man. I mean, again, and also, like, what 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 I think is crazy it doesn't exist because I've seen it all, you know? <laughs> so, like, I'm sure some people would have seen some of the things I've seen on this tour and going, wow, that's crazy, and I just walk by it like it's not even there. Die, motherfucker, die. Check it out. That's what it is, yo. And where can people find a copy of this? Uh, you can buy it on iTunes. Uh, you can probably get it at Best Buy. If you want to get uh, any of the bundle packs, uh, go to dopetheband.com. If you want to follow us on social media, go to facebook.com slash dopetheband, Instagram at dopetheband, Twitter at dopetheband. Okay. Very well. Peace. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Later. Be good, man.